Have you ever wished you could eavesdrop on a conversation with a millionaire? My name is Michelle Thompson. I'm a retired project controls engineer and business professor, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this podcast. I get to ask the questions that everyone else wishes they could. I'm gonna find out exactly how they were able to build their empires through automation and outsourcing. And I'm gonna break it down in a way that helps you build your business to run on autopilot. Don't miss out on Automate to Dominate. From author Donnie Bovine comes the book, How to Be a Success Champion, available on Amazon. After years of living other people's dreams, author Donnie Bovine decided to jump out on his own and start a business, thinking it would be easy. Instead, he had a rude awakening and quickly understood that he had spent 20 years being an employee and had no idea how to be a business owner. His business was tanking, and he was on the brink of losing everything when he decided to fight for business freedom. In this must-read and life-changing book, author Donnie Donnie Bovine shares with readers his story intermingled with lessons learned from his mistakes and his failures. And how to be a success champion, you will find advice the author received from mentors and how he went from zero to a six-figure business. The author walks you through the steps of how to get out of your own way, how to play the game of business and win, find your strengths, how to network effectively, how to build a personal brand, how to create champions for your business, how to get great at sales, how to take complete ownership of you and your business how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon in both kindle and paperback editions order your copy right now hello everybody and welcome to another episode of automate to dominate today we have james baskin with us and he is the owner of outsource kings and so if you can think of lead gen and follow up on autopilot this is the man so James, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. So tell us, give us just a little bit of a quick background. Um, you know, how did you get to where you're at? What made you build Outsource Kings? What made you want to go into um, call centers, things like that? Yeah, so I had an insurance agency. And I first discovered outsourcing, you know, from someone else, probably like most people do. And I discovered a lot of people in the insurance industry were outsourcing. And uh, I realized a lot of the tasks I was doing were just so repetitive. So I would get direct mail leads and I would get like this anxiety, this fear when I had to call them, but I would just do it. So I'd push through it because it had to get done. And I also realized that I was leaving a lot of money on the table with cold calling. And so, you know, if I find my, this friend of mine or whatever, he's outsourcing, he's saying he's using people in the Philippines and he's cold calling. And I'm like, man, I want to do that. So like anything, you know, I hire the first person I meet and it, you know, it's a disaster. You know, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. And then eventually, you know, I go through a bunch of other people and we start cold calling and we start generating leads like pretty much every hour. And so we probably generated about one lead an hour, I'd say on average. And I realized I could still run my day and have people cold call for me throughout the day. And I could just sell insurance all day. And so it leveraged my time and we would call the people and the girls would call to confirm my appointments and they would call the people and they would say, Hey, uh, when they would set the appointment, they would say, what kind of car do you have in the driveway? And the reason being would be when I would go out to sell um, life insurance or Medicare, I would see if that car was in the driveway. And if that car wasn't in the driveway, it meant they weren't home and I would just keep on driving to my next appointment. And so these girls, they would, you know, call to confirm. And then we slowly, you know, grew the business. And slowly with what I was doing with outsourcing, other marketers started asking me to, you know, teach them. And then I had people ask me if uh, I could do it for them. And then basically it outweighed doing what I'm doing now versus, you know, running around selling insurance nonstop. That's awesome. And what a slick way to just kind of get that confirmation from them just by asking for the car. That's, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. My prior life, I did something similar. I was, um, uh, ran an insurance agency for a financial firm. Um, and, uh, same, same type deal it's amazing how much you can get done when you can get stuff 
off of your plate. So we're kind of in the middle of this craziness going on with businesses right now and everybody and their brother wants to know, you know, Hey, what, you know, Michelle, I know you do outsourcing and that's great. And you can help us create SOPs, blah, blah, blah. That's all boring. And it's not bringing money into my business right now and I'm dying. So what are some things that you can use VAs for to bring in revenue into your business like right now? What are some revenue gener generating activities? Yeah, so a, a lot of the stuff right now, and I, I might go back on how I say this a little bit, it may not be instant, you know, tomorrow money. Um, I've been on a lot of calls lately, more than ever, and with a lot of the people that I look up to and respect, are saying right now is the best time for audience building and you know growing that audience for the long term you know which you know most businesses you know should have cash reserves for something like this and if you don't you know you're not bad it's just you know you know you might be more in hot water than the next guy and um kind of going a little off topic with that but you know one of the ways you can have your vas generate activity now which can then turn into revenue it's not like it's going to be like closed sale tomorrow is by cold messaging people that you're already friends with on facebook this is something that literally as we're talking right now someone is controlling my facebook and we're reaching out to people and um it's one of my methods that i think i, I, I mentioned that i would teach some methods in here and i'm sure you'll ask me also and one of them is our, our birthday method where we have a reason to reach out to someone and we even create a conversation. And so if you already have been creating content throughout the year, I mean, I, I actually have VAs create my content for me. So if you've already been outsourcing your content or creating content throughout the year and people know what you do and you're reaching out to them with a open ended question, wishing them happy birthday to create a conversation. I'm here to tell you it is almost like the easiest sale you've ever done. I have a, I have a lady right now. She's been with me for over six months plus for my uh, monthly retainer service. And all we did was wish her happy birthday. That's it. And she said, I've been waiting to hear from you for a while. Can't wait to talk on a, on a call. And that was it. You know, she like couldn't so you wait. Just said, you just said happy birthday. And she said, I need a call center VA. <laughs> We, 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 we gave her, we, we do a little more in depth than that. Um, I don't mind, you know, I don't know if you share any files with people or links, um, on the uh, podcast, but you know, I don't mind sharing yeah. it with, any, with your anything audience. you're, anything you're willing to, to provide sure. or happy to, to give to our audience. Sure. So I'll, I'll include, um, with this cause I really appreciate this, my, uh, birthday template, which is essentially what we're doing right now. And, we wish them happy birthday and you know, however that is, I, I like, I like people to have it in their own language, how they speak, you know, and you know, most people like aren't saying the word King in, in their, in their line. And I, I use that for my, for my brand and, and most people aren't saying, you know, blessings or blessed. And I say that, so your own verbiage when you say happy birthday, but the last line is very important and it leaves it to an open-ended question. Hey, when's a good time for us to catch up? Hey, um, uh, you mind if we hop on a call tomorrow? Just something simple. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, it, it, when I first thought of this, I didn't expect much. I wanted to try it. And we've actually since adjusted the script twice now. And I've had people been like, I've just had amazing conversations with people that, you know, I, I, I wish I could remember to wish 20 people on my Facebook today, happy birthday. I really do. But you know, it's even better when I set up a time for us to talk and it's outsourced and I just hop on the phone call. So it, it's still authentic. And I'm actually having that phone call with someone. I've had phone calls with long-term friends that I forgot about, you know, unfortunately, or we just went our separate ways. And um, this also will generate revenue activity. I'm hundred percent sure for someone out there, if they start implementing this, that being said, not related to VAs. If you don't have a VA, if you, if you want to do it yourself first, I highly recommend that also. And so that can generate activity. 
uh, not so much outsourcing, obviously you're doing it yourself, but you know, this could be something that, you know, you do yourself first and then have your VAs do. Cause a lot of people aren't going to, you know, overnight feel comfortable just giving their VA access to their, you know, computer. You're not sharing Facebook logins for anyone that's listening. You're not sharing Facebook logins. And, um, so that's one method, uh, cold email. Uh, there's a lot of email programs out there. I just got off a, a call earlier today um, with a, a guy that I work with. Um, and uh, I mean, you probably know him also, Dan Henry, and was on a call oh, with him. Yeah. Today. Yep. Everybody knows Dan Henry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was on a call with him today. Um, we, we're, I'm, I'm in a, a group coaching program with him. And, you know, he's, you know, we're talking about um, many chat you know, no longer going to be the thing and everything's going to start shifting to email, which is going to be interesting. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, so you know what was when, his re what was his reasoning behind that? Now you've got me curious. Yeah. Yeah. So right now with a lot of stuff with, um, what you're capable of with many chat, um, there's been updates for, you know, many chat and Facebook compatibility. And so many chat from what I understand, I, it's kind of funny today they had a conference and I actually attended a many chat online conference today you know, and I'm like all set. And then all of a sudden Dan's like, yo, we're, we're switching to, you know, uh, email. And so that's funny. Hold, hold on one second. Hey Jay, let me take over real quick. So, um, you're good, Jay. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, email and, uh, if you have a large list, you can, uh, all that stuff can be outsourced by the way. And, uh, and I, I, I actually listened to one of your other podcasts, um, with Jeff Hunter. So shout out to Jeff Hunter. Um, and you know, it was interesting listening to you guys talk. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into it somehow in this conversation. I want to answer this question a little more in depth before I get too carried away, but you guys talked about the need for SOPs and doing things yourself first. And so email is a perfect example. You know, I would never, you know, just randomly have someone on my team be like, Hey, go ahead and, you know, start generating leads with email. And they've never even given me an inkling that they know how to do that. So, you know, for anyone listening, don't just think that your uh, virtual assistant is going to all of a sudden, you know, create these leads. Yeah. And that's the scary part about it is people think that, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, um, without realizing it, we kind of think that getting a VA is like getting, you know, a can of soda out of a vending machine, right? You know, yep. you press, press B3 and out drops the can of Coke, right? And, and you know, you, you laugh because when you think about it, you're like, oh, I don't do that. And then you're like, you start thinking about it. And, you know, you think you're, you're getting this cookie cutter little template that's just going to like solve all your problems and do everything for you. And that's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> yep. Yep, exactly. And then the next one is going to be, and, and I should have probably led with this one. You already have money out there waiting for you. Anyone that's listening to this, unless you're absolutely brand spanking new and you've never had a client before, you have money out there waiting for you. And I've built a service, um, my whole pretty much business, my done for you service, um, outside of any consultant or course stuff that I do, my whole done for you service was built around this. Um, on average, you know, we're you know, generally around like 15 to 20 clients a month we're, we're working with. And what it is, is calling your leads. So, you know, I've built a service around where I have outsourced to a, my team where we call clients leads. And so if you're not running Facebook ads, you know, this still applies to you. And chances are somewhere in your CRM, somewhere in your Facebook messages, or emails, there's people that gave you a phone number that you reached out to, you called them once, and that's it. And there's, you know, you, you forgot to call them again. And the follow-up, I designed my business around. And so 
there's probably people out there that if you were to call them right now, if you have a list that's large enough, you could start scheduling appointments for your week. Um, that can be done through the phone call. That also can be done kind of going back to Facebook again uh, and outsourcing. Having someone go through your unread messages. There's probably people listening and maybe even you. My, I know I'm guilty of this, so I can't, uh, I, don't, I don't think everyone is, but there's probably people listening, I know I'm guilty, that have messages where people are like, hey man, I wanna talk to you about your services. And you had every best intention and you forgot and the next day you wake up and you got many things to do and you never got back to that person. And so, you know, if you have virtual assistant go through into your chats, click settings, click unread messages, and they just go through and they have like a generic response if the message applies and they send a calendar link, you're gonna start showing up with some more appointments the next day. That's another method. Awesome, so when somebody's like first getting into this, right? They're, they're new with outsourcing. How do they go about creating a procedure to be able to give to a VA so that things just don't blow up like they always do for us the first couple times we try this. Yeah. So, and I have this right in front of me as well. And I, I made this method and I'm going to give this to your audience also. It's, uh, you know, something that I put into paper. Uh, it, it will be essentially like a, a PDF. Probably by the time this is out, we'll have a PDF that we can share with your audience on this, make it more easily readable. And it's called the OK Go method. And um, so I'll kind of go over what it is and what it involves. And I'll kind of start, you know, from a thousand foot view. And then I'll also, you know, go deeper with it. So there's going to be a couple stages with it. The first stage is going to be mindset. The second stage you're going to do is your offer, your job posting. The third stage is going to be interviews. Fourth stage is going to be SOP training. And then the fifth stage is going to be 90 day monitoring, monitoring, sorry, they're a little hard to pronounce that. And um, so with mindset, your mind has to be in the right place and you also have to be ready to work with someone. I think a lot of people, you know, they understand the idea, Hey, I'm going to outsource something. Hey, this is going to you know, drastically lower my costs and I'll get work done. But then they don't, take the other caveat with it. Like they also need to be understanding of another person in another area in a whole nother part of the world. That's walking, working 13 hours ahead of them. I call them future workers. <laughs> They're working in the future. And so if your mindset's not in the right place, it's going to be, you know, just a disaster that's going to, you know, hold you back from growing. And I like to tell my story with that because I constantly suffered from distrust issues or not sure if this is going to work out kind of thing. And guess what? It never did. And where it created arguments. I had girls that worked for me that I'm embarrassed to say, but I like to be open and upfront. You know, they told me that after their shift, they would cry because I was that brutal to work for. And when I heard that kind of stuff, it didn't make me feel good for sure. And my mindset was just awful. And, you know, it's like you go through enough pain, you're going to either change or, you know, everyone's just going to keep on quitting on you, which I know all too well what that's like, or having to fire whole teams. And my mindset was just like so poor. And I also say a lot of stuff in just business in general, a lot of it just always goes back to mindset. So I think that is so crucial for someone that's outsourcing or hiring a virtual assistant for the first time. This is bigger than you just put in a job post on online jobs or wherever you go and you find someone. It, even if you're hiring someone and you're hiring one of these agencies that sells you, you know, a person that's trained and ready to go, like if they're not touching on a mindset, they're, they're doing you a disservice and they're setting you up for failure because essentially your work is going to be done and your time is going to be leveraged. But if you don't know how to manage people and also how to be a good leader, it's going to, you know, people are going to fail and you're going to fail. The uh, second stage, the job post is very crucial. The word in, you know, even, even quizzing the person that you're talking to 
on the warden? Did they actually read the job post or they just copy and paste in a hundred messages every single day and just send the same generic response? So that's crucial also. And then the third, third part uh, to go along with job posts is going to be the interview. How does this person interview? Are they sounding like they're the best interview ever and it's rehearsed or are they, you know, pausing? They're not a hundred percent confident, but they have that hard work ethic. I listened to the story of your podcast with Jeff and he talked about one of his, his employees. That's his long-term person. And, you know, I know that all too well with people that work for me now, you know, you're talk, you talking about his sales guy, the guy uh, that, Went through and was like, I really need this job. And yeah, went, the, the, the girl did all that, that data mining. Yeah, the girl that's with him now. And, um, you know, and, and that that kind of goes into like the the last stage. And, and yes, yeah, some, some of the people, I mean, I've, I've been on interviews with people that just tell me they, they, they do everything. And, and you'll sit there in the beginning and you're like, I have arrived. I have found the perfect person. And it's just all not, none of it's real. <laughs> And the person like literally just made it all up. Smoke and, and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> yep. Hey, one second. Hey, Jay, I'm going to take over now, okay? And um, so it's kind of funny. As we're doing this, we just knocked out what I talked about earlier. One of the girls that works for me just knocked out. I think it was like, I don't know, I'm looking right now. It looks like it was about 10 birthday messages. And from that, that probably will create some kind of conversation. And um, sorry, I, I wanted to mention that. And so literally as I'm doing this podcast, someone is doing cold messaging for me. And so after interviews, stage four is going to be your SOP training. I know you and Jeff talked about it and I got so excited about that because like, I wouldn't say that's like the newest thing that we've done. I've probably had SOPs, you know, for well over at least a year and a half now. But it's so interesting when I look back on my history of my business and how I lacked SOPs 100% to the core and how now I like have like subcategory SOPs and, you know. It's amazing like, how more detailed you become, how much easier it is to have a virtual assistant, both for you and for the virtual assistant. Like the more crystal clear you become, the easier it gets. Yep. And it's, it's hard for people because they don't want to put that work in because it's work in the beginning, right? When you're creating that SOP, that there's nothing fun about it. Right. But you know, once it's done, oh my gosh, it's so freeing because you never have to touch it again. Yep. Yep. And then, so the SOPs, I could go, I could, I could literally probably do the whole rest of the talk on, on, on a single one of these stages. Um, but yeah, SOPs and, the, and creating the standard operating procedures for every new employee to follow. And then you have to create and implement the structure order for that. And you'll know when this is done with how the team performs and the updates. Updates are huge for SOPs in case there's a, you know, a breakdown. And then after SOPs is going to be. So when now. that, when you're doing that update, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Sure, no, no, please do. Please do. I have my team do the updates. I'm not personally going in and doing the updates myself. Are you doing them yourself? Are you having the team do it? What are you doing? Yes and no. Uh, it depends on what it is. So I have a project manager who trains all the girls and she, and, and it's interesting because I know for a fact that she runs things a little bit different than I do, which is probably one of the reasons why we're a good fit for each other. Cause we're not exactly the same. And she's on the, she's on the team and she's monitoring doing what they call up trainings consistently versus where one of my biggest things, and I am hundred percent transparency. One of my biggest things was I never wanted to listen to the calls for that we're going out. So we used to cold call people and I, 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 it's too long ago for me to remember the exact numbers. I know my numbers now on average, it depends on what the week looks like. It always fluctuates sometimes depending on how many Facebook leads we receive on average. We're making three to 5,000 phone calls a week. And 
that is from uh, leads we receive. Now, when we were cold calling, that number was much, much, much higher. And so that number was like drastically higher. And I did not want to listen to the calls. I don't know what it was, some weird, quirky fear uh, that kind of like brought me back to like, I didn't like having to like schedule appointments, which is weird because I can, you know, I'll call a, a lead like a, for my own service. No problem nowadays, but sometimes I don't, it's just some mental fear. But anyways, what I'm getting that is, is like we have someone that does QA and they do training for that. And if I was set to do that, all of it would fail because I would totally, you know, fall short. However, when it comes to other tasks that are more directly involved in certain things, I'll, I'll talk to the girls directly about that. And then I'll do some up trainings, but like day-to-day operations, I'm, I'm removed from that kind of stuff for SOP training. So where do you spend the majority of your time now that you've cracked the code and you can pretty much hand off just about whatever you want? Yeah. So kind of just to go back just for a second. Um, yeah. And, yeah, go ahead. Uh, stage five, 90 day monitoring and mentorship. And that is crucial also in the fact that that person that has now been with you for 90 days if you are scaling and you can bring on another person and you have recorded the training SOPs. And I I know, I know you and Jeff talked about this too. And so it's awesome to hear he's doing something very similar. We are, we record everything with loom. And so when a new hire comes on, we send them all the loom videos for the first couple of days and watch, have them watch it. And so we leverage our time. And then if they have any questions, the girls work with that person and they can refer them back to the Loom video. So basically that person that you now, you know, took through the ringer and they learned all this stuff and now they're at 90 days of working with you. Now they can bring on another person and you can start scaling your business that way. And so in the mentorship program, just kind of like uh, watching training videos, establishing tasks, basically everything I just said there, I was reading some of my notes and to answer where I spend most of my time now, I like to, like, I'm always, it's weird. It's like, the more I think about it, like my brain, I guess, operates like most entrepreneurs, maybe it doesn't. I'm always trying to think like five steps, 10 steps ahead of, of where I'm at. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. So where my brain thinks now is like, okay, what, organic methods can we do for this platform to consistently generate appointments on average? I, I mean, it's interesting. Like we are in interesting times right now, but in the, like mostly on average, I do about three to five appointments a day. I like that. It's, it's comfortable for me. I I can run my day and um, I still do the sales. I like to do the sales because we have a done for you service and we do consulting once a week with all of our clients on top of our service that we already do. So it's like one of those things, like I don't want to like give up full control of the sales because I don't want just anyone getting into our service. So most of my day is on calls like that client calls. We do uh, calls once a week with our clients. So generally speaking, I'm on at least a couple client calls a day. And then also I'll be honest, I'm, 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 a, I'm a student. So I'm, I'm going through a couple courses right now. You know, I mentioned, you know, Dan Henry, uh, I'm on another course right now with a guy, Scott Olford. And as you should be, you should never stop being a student. <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm constantly like, you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, we have our SOPs and then I have what my set schedule is. And then I have a, a large whiteboard of things that I need to do. Like um, I've, and anyone that knows me that's ever spoken to me that knows me a little bit in depth will tell you James, James Baskin and he, he outsources a lot of stuff, but I'm not a Facebook ads guy. You know, it's interesting. You know, you go into entre- entrepreneur world, everyone's a Facebook ads guy and they're all, you know, you know, the Facebook ads guru of the week type of thing. And I, I've literally grown my business to three to five appointments a week, all organically referrals, organic. Um, and we just now are starting to do uh, cold outreach with uh, cold calling co- um, contractors 
to schedule appointments for us to follow up in their CRM. And technically, I guess that is um, outsourced, I guess. It's, a, it's not me that's doing it. So it's someone else um, in the US based, but they're gonna be making phone calls for my company. And um, so I'm sure I'll have growing pains with that. But you know, even that is like, I'm training someone else. Like it's 1030 at night here where I'm at right now. And I have a call at 1230, two hours from now for another phone call with my, my sales guy with training him. So it's like all kinds of calls throughout the day for different things that I'm thinking like, you know, three months from now, what's it going to look like when our sales guy has made X amount of calls, you know, hopefully by three months, he's produced some kind of result. I mean, he's commission based, so I'm not too, too worried, but I'm spending a lot of time training this person. And so it's That's like, interesting. How, wait a minute. How did you get a Filipino to work commission based? No, no. U.S. based, U.S. based. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Because I was like, "Whoa, that's whole yeah. new territory there." Yeah, I, I would, I, I would never do that. Um, yeah, yeah, always, always hourly. Um, but no, the the salesperson is U.S. based, and they are, you know, 100% commission based, spending their own time. I'm providing, you know, dialer and all kinds of other stuff, but you know, and training, and so. But yeah, I mean, so that's the kind of stuff that like it's interesting. You know, I'm back in that role again of training people. And I'll be, I'll be straightforward. I mean, and anyone that's listening, obviously, this has been a, a long time since I've had to train someone because I have a team that does all that for me. But now I'm doing something to replace myself. Eventually, if this guy performs well enough, he'll take over my role of warm leads as well. And I'll be 100% removed from the sales you know, position because I want to have, you know, if I do that, now... I'll have a full free day to do whatever. I won't have to hop on any call because I already have a project manager. She trains and hires all the new girls. And, and now at this point, all she does is just monitor and then do up training. We don't, we don't have to hire or fire like we used to, you know, we have a good group of girls and you know, my project manager, she just oversees them all, you know, and we, we do a weekly call once a week where we all hop on a call and, I'll be honest with you. Generally, it's just, you know, a, a positive, you know, friendly call and we're all laughing and we're all, you know, having great memories, you know, versus like one of those like boardroom meetings, you know, corporate America, like this is what you did wrong this week. It's the exact opposite. You know, it's praise and accolades. And that's so, so important with your team to build those relationships. And that's something that I talk about a lot is, you know, just making sure that you're giving all that feedback, um, you know, because that's so important, especially in the Filipino culture. Um, you know, it's just, just amazing. But what, what's really cool is um, I know for a fact that you care an awful lot about your employees because you're giving back to them um, and you're changing lives and in the Philippines. So tell us a little bit about how you're giving back. Sure. Um, I'll kind of start where we're at now with Corona times right now, and then I'll kind of jump back to the start and then I'll kind of work my way back again. So right now, I guess you could say we're in the, the peak of, they call it Rona season, Corona season, whatever they call it. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, chaos everywhere. And, um, and the best thing you can, that we can do right now as entrepreneurs is be leaders for both our team and for both our clients. So specifically speaking for me and my team, uh, I'm that leader. I'm that person that um, I'm reminding everyone I'm here for them consistently. I care for you. These are the messages that I send out and it, 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 will, it will come different times throughout the day that I'll send these kind of messages out. And I'll say, hey, I'm here for any of you girls. If you, if you just need to take a, a break, however long it is, just because it's a, a lot going on right now. And, you know, it happens. You know, sometimes you just have to, like, like one of those, like, walk away for a moment type of thing. I'm here for you. And, you know, we'll make sure everything's covered um, just because there's a lot going on. So that's, you know, the first thing when it comes to, like, I guess you could say mentally or mindset. Now, where a lot of it matters is going to be financially. And so when this first started, I sent all the girls uh, two weeks pay in advance uh, about probably, 
probably at this point, it's about a, a month ago I did this so they could buy supplies ahead of time. I also included extra money in the pay specifically for supplies. So they got two weeks worth of advance, they got advanced pay so they could you know, buy all the stuff in preparation. And then they also got pay for uh, whatever, gloves, masks, um, hand sanitizer, whatever kind of stuff they needed. And, you know, I, I, I know I trust, I trust my girls like family. And so I know that they, you know, are taking care of their family and their, their, their loved ones. So that was one of the, one of the ways, um, in the beginning, what things looked like was a lot different. And, you know, I think as a company, we've evolved a lot from what we've done as a service. I know we've, we've basically at this point, we now charge three times as much as what we used to charge, which is really interesting when I think back to it, but even our roots in the beginning, we started with our um, 10% given back to the kids. And so even that looks a little bit different than what it looks like now. So what it, in the beginning it was, was we would send money back to the Philippines and we would buy toys for kids. And um, it's interesting, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of different things with, you know, unfortunately there's, you know, tragedies that happen all over the world. And I think it was, um, I forget, if it was um, New Jersey, it was one of the, one of the storms. Actually, you know what? It was Houston. When Houston had the flood and Houston had that awful, awful flood that, that displaced a lot of people, they were saying, don't send toys. We can't land our planes because there's so many toys everywhere. So they had so many toys they didn't know what to do. And how does that correlate to the, to the Philippines? It, it correlates because a toy isn't going to feed a starving kid. And this is, you know, how I've had to, you know, realize like this is something I didn't know. I thought I'm doing such an amazing thing, um, sending money for toys for Christmas, um, sending money. And we were giving out toys. One of the girls that works for me, she went into one of the neighborhoods and we gave out toys and we gave out children's kids books for Christmas. And, you know, she went out and she, you know, took photos of all the kids and the neighborhoods and all kinds of stuff. And, and now it still was a great act. Uh, and, and felt rewarding for both of us. But the thing was, I had to realize, you know, I didn't realize how many kids were, were going hungry there in certain areas. And I didn't realize how many people lacked base, basic hygiene in, in certain areas. And so it morphed from giving toys to um, there was a uh, landslide in uh, Naga Sabu. Uh, right outside of Cebu, there was a landslide and a bunch of kids were displaced. And I guess, you know, they, they lost their parents in the landsl uh, landslide and they lived in basically what would be like a, where you would like dump your garbage practically. And this is where these, these kids lived and there were some families there. And so that was one of the first areas that we actually started given these, um, one of the, one of the girls actually did this for me. She, made these bags and it's such an awesome thing that she did. And she, she wrote outsource Kings on it, which is, you know, it's, it, it, I never even asked for that. That's cool that she did that. And we gave these little bags with toothbrushes, uh, toothpaste, uh, soap, and some other basic toiletries that could immediately help that person, um, you know, versus, you know, Hey, here's a toy. You know what I mean? Cause more than likely, you know, I started hearing people say, you know, if you give them toys, they're just going to sell it anyways, which I would too. If I'm hungry. You know, how can I, you know, quick get a dollar? And so we started doing that. And now what it's morphed into, I had to realize, you know, part of what I know as a, as an employer, as a boss, and my team will tell you, I feed my team before I feed myself. And what that means is I pay them first before I take any bit of money that's going to go toward expenses. And I always make sure they're taken care of. And they'll, I, they'll all tell you, you know, I, I ask them, Hey, have you, have you any problems picking up with your money? I want to make sure you guys get it. Okay. And, and, and receive it, you know, in, in timely manner. And so I also started to take a look inwardly. Uh, one of the girls that was working for me, she used to go out and deliver all this stuff around. And then um, she had a newborn baby. And then it was like, do I continue doing that or do I 
partner with other organizations. And so, um, well, I kind of did a little of, of both. And um, one of the girls that she actually listened to me right now, Janice, um, I, I try to, you know, I probably could give a little more, but she's part of an organization and I'll give her money and then she'll help. It's called JCI. And, um, and the, we did, we did stuff where we gave um, bottled water. Uh, she, she, uh, their area, probably about a couple months ago now, it's crazy how fast time flies. They went through a really rough, uh, um, I forget what it was. It was a monsoon typhoon, typhoon that, that hit the Philippines a couple months ago, really, really bad. And her area was affected. And so we were able to help out as a company and, you know, help donate to that. And, um, when I said about like my team eating first, it also means that I take care of them the most because they work for me. And so I buy school uniforms for all the girls, kids that work for me. Um, which also means that, you know, I get first day back to school pictures also, which is hilarious and in its own way, because it's like, you know, I don't have any kids, but I know for sure I'm going to get first day back to school pictures from the girls in the Philippines. And I'm going to get to see all their little kids going to school. A lot of them are in uh, Catholic school. Some of them are, have their kids in, in private school, which is very important for them, education. And so um, I sponsored a birthday party this year. That was cool. Uh, I sponsored this um, one kid's birthday party and all of his classmates, you know, and I got them Jollibee. Um, and then a couple other girls that work for me, I will buy their kids toys. Uh, I, I always give toys to my team on Christmas. Um, I think uh, it's almost interesting how, how, how it's kind of funny that I forget half the stuff I've done. But, you know, I just remembered I was down in Columbia a month ago. And um, one of the girls that works for me, her, her daughter did good in school. And so I sent her um, a surprise gift for her, her daughter to give her, you know, and, and said, hey, you know, here's X amount of dollars, you know, you know, please give to your daughter and let her know that she's doing a great job in school. And so that's the kind of given that I like to do internally with my team now, because I can make the biggest impact and I can see the impact. And um, so we still try to do some stuff outside of it. But, you know, right now it's kind of like, you know, going more internally and the kind of forecast, which I don't know when this will happen. My, my plan was to be in the Philippines around June, July. That's obviously not going to happen because of everything going on. And um, one of the biggest things that I want to work on next is with local government agencies. Um, Cause this is the only proper way that I can do it apparently where we actually start to build something that's going to outlast me. You know, a, a truck or a bus could, you know, hit me tomorrow and I'm gone and what's going to outlast me and that's going to be wells providing uh clean drinking water for people and you know just anywhere water is life and well a well will outlast me that will live longer than i could you know probably live and so that's the next biggest thing i know it's a lot took me a lot of money and that's good are, are you targeting wells in the philippines or different country so i know a couple people i've talked to in manila and that's like where my start's going to be, which it's going to hundred percent going to be in the Philippines. I know friends of mine that have done it in Bali and the Philippines. So a lot of it's going to be rural areas and I know it's not going to be cheap, but I know that it will be uh, impactful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if I can pivot us just a little bit here, yeah. if there's somebody who's listening to this and they're like, gosh, I, you know, I really want to be a part of this. I, I love the idea. I love the fact that I can get stuff off my plate and change other people's lives at the same time, but I don't know where to get started. So what are, what are some things that are super easy that every business owner can get off their plate that will free up 15, 20 hours a week for them? So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess it really all depends on what their industry is first. But I would say like some of the, the biggest tasks that you can do first is start outsourcing things like data entry. So imagine if you're putting numbers into a spreadsheet and it's like a consistent repetitive task that you do every single day and it takes you a couple hours. That's the, one of the first things that um, I started outsourcing outside of cold calling. And I, I had a guy um, and I, I'll, whether, I mean, he doesn't work for me right now. And if he ever comes back to work for me, like 
that'd be awesome. But I, I mean, right now all my girls do data entry on top of their job, but this guy didn't cold call. So it was kind of like he only just did data entry, which, you know, it was interesting because I, I, I'm straightforward. I paid him a dollar an hour. He stayed at home with his dogs. He ate potato chips. You know, he lived the life, you know, that sounds like to me. And he would just literally just do Microsoft Excel. That was his only skill set was Microsoft Excel. And like I said, he doesn't work with me right now because he wants full time and I don't have 40 hours a week of just straight Microsoft Excel work. I wish I did, you know, great guy, Alfred, Alfred. And he would, I gave him all these leads from direct mail. I cleared, I cleared out a portion of my filing cabinet of direct mail leads from my insurance days. And he literally just put them into Microsoft Excel. So that way we could upload them as a CSV into a CRM, into a dialer. And so first thing would be data entry. You know, do you have a whole bunch of notes that are all over a bunch of papers? And would that look better? You know, maybe in some, maybe in a, you know, a document or something like that. So you can take a picture of the notes, you can send that picture to someone and then they can type up your notes. And now all of a sudden you can have all your notes put into a document. Um, I'll talk about a bunch of stuff and it may not be in a specific order. Some things that I've outsourced that will free up time. Um, I'm sure your audience like varies in, in who they are. Maybe they're, you know, business, business professionals. I mean, I should ask you like, what's like the general person that listens to your audience? Yeah. So most of them are, um, either solopreneurs or small business owners. So they're at a point where they're, they're generating income, uh, but there's not a, a ton of extra money left over at the end of month to, to, you know, just hire 10 people in the United States to take over everything. Sure. So one of the things that I started doing a lot of, and if you're a small business owner or a solopreneur, you probably are going to conferences. You know, there's a lot of big events that people talk about funnel hacking live or, you know, like those are the big ones, you know, and um, traffic and conversion on all these different, you know, conferences. I, I'll be straightforward. I usually end up at, at a lot of smaller, intimate conferences. That's just me and um, how I roll. Not a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's just what I like. So the, what I'm going to talk about will apply to any type of conference, probably better for the smaller, intimate ones. And it's, I'll send you a picture um, later on or a tag in the photo. Um, one of the girls that was just on here, um, she's actually done it for me. I will have the girls sit in the conference for me while I go, while I go network craziest thing I came up with this. Um, I don't think I'm unique for doing this. I think maybe there's someone else out there doing it, or maybe I'm one of the few people that does this. What I'll do is I will have a virtual assistant on Skype, listen, I'll put them close to the speaker and I'll have them take notes. So they're literally here in the speaker and I have them take my notes for me. And then if I hear anything while I'm there also, cause I'm not a hundred percent ignoring what's going on. I, I paid for this conference. However, what I realized was there was a lot of times I'd be at conferences while there's a speaker that I wanted to hit, but now in this conversation with this person, so I'm at a dilemma. I can't get back to my seat here's this person that could bring me business today. It's a sale. You know, this person says, Hey, I want to start your services. Can you explain a little bit? And like, you know, can I give you payment? And, but now here's someone like uh, the event I was at was uh, Perry Belcher, Mitch Miller and Bobby stocks. And it's like, boom, here's Perry Belcher who like is like an OG. And it's like, I don't want to miss this. And so I've got a, a laptop, no bull, no bull crap. I'm trying to, not try to curse. That's I got a laptop in my seat with a virtual assistant attending the conference. It trips people out. It's hilarious because they'll see like my, you know, Filipino virtual assistant person's picture there in the seat with them. And I've never seen it before. So I guess I will say that I've never seen anyone else do this, but I essentially have people in the Philippines attend a conference for me while I go network and they will take notes if there's a recording of the conference, they review the recording and they'll take even more notes. Um, generally speaking, we okay this with the conference promoters. We'll take all the notes and then we'll, we'll ask the people that run the conference if we can resell the notes 
to all the participants. And then we, people have told me that I've actually done a better job with note taking than they did. And I didn't even attend like all of it. I wasn't even in my seat. And then all the money we make from the, from the sales of that, we donate back to the Philippines. So I don't even make any money off that. That's just like a, you know, a fun thing and it helps with my, you know, authority and credibility. So that's another thing, outsourcing, attending conferences. Cause I know a lot of people like to attend tons of conferences. So maybe even like your, your BNI group, you know, if you have a virtual. I, I do that. Actually, I got, I got to just jump in. I do that all the time too. Cause right. How many like virtual summits are there? Right. And they're, they're everywhere. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I, I don't have this much time and I don't want to sit here. And so I'll have my VA listen to it and send me the notes. And Love it's it. amazing. Like I just, I just sent them on a meet Edgar conference. And uh, so they learned all about like social networking and, and everything, yep. which I needed them to learn anyway. But then I get like 10 pages of detailed notes and I was like, nice <laughs> you yep. know so it's it's a super efficient way to be able to to glean the information but not have to be there yourself so awesome tip yep so yeah we just took that into the uh actual that's, that's, that's actually awesome to hear that someone else does that because i was always wondering like like is anyone else doing this like oh i haven't been smart enough to do it at a conference yet i've just done it virtually like through yeah. trainings and summits and things like that, but never actually at a conference. That's, that's a cool idea. Yeah. I had people like taking pictures of my computer and I, I still, every once in a while, if I see someone from this event, now it might've been a 50 or a hundred person event. I forget. It wasn't like super large. Like Funnel Hacking Live's thousands of people. I don't even think I would have like someone unless I was like close enough to the speaker. Cause you have to be close enough to the speaker. And at that point it's probably not even worth it. But like these small intimate events, which are what I like the most, it it's like boom perfect place so that's that's another thing and um you know pretty much what i already talked about with what our service is and you know obviously you know put a plug in for my service and also for teaching anyone my service also because we now also teach people how to do what we do which is how to follow up with leads in a timely manner and call in leads as they come in i think a lot of entrepreneurs and you know kind of probably should have led with this, but a lot of entrepreneurs, small business owners are doing everything. And if they have a virtual assistant, they should utilize that virtual assistant to A, call their leads when they come in, B, do the follow-up, and then C, do the organization of everything involved in that. So they can remove themselves from, hey, I, I talked to John Smith at 12 o'clock he said call him back at three now i'm on this other call and they and they know and then the next day comes along and they're like oh i can't call him back so now they've just like wasted opportunity and that goes back to how they can start generating revenue today is by having someone like the name of the game and i think we talked about beforehand you talked about um something about like you said about speed like speed is the name of the game and so is follow-up speed and follow-up that's the gist of it. You know what I mean? If you can contact someone back quickly that inquired about your service and then B, if you can follow up with them enough that they either tell you to get lost, kick rocks or B, agree to that appointment. That's it. You know what I mean? But most places they're not doing a timely manner. You know, they're, you know, a couple hours later at best, or it's like the next day. And some of these organizations that we've done audits for analyze them they do a half day on Friday. They don't get to the leads till Monday. And so it's like, at that point, it's like, you might as well just light money on fire. And so we'll go in there and we'll tell them, how does it sound to have seven days a week of people calling your leads? And they're just like mind blown. They're like, we don't even work weekends. We, and it's like, okay, yeah. We work nine o'clock to eight o'clock every time zone. And then we also do a, do a half days on Saturday and Sunday. And then they're just mind blown. And then we also teach um, companies how to do this as well now. That's awesome. So let's say somebody's listening to this and they're like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Um, James, how do they get a hold of you to book your services? Yeah, absolutely. Facebook is uh, my, my first choice. I always like interacting with people on Facebook. I like seeing them. Are they a real person? What are they about? 
And I also like the main thing for them to see me. What am I about? You know, I even tell people on calls with me, please add me on Facebook, you know, shoot me a friend request before, you know, we hop on our call. So that I, I want them to check me out too, you know, cause I, you know, every once in a while people would be like, Oh, I, I was checking out your content before a call. And that's just like an awesome thing to hear. So Facebook, James King, K I N G Baskin, B A S K I N. And then my company outsource kings.com with an S on the end of it, kings with an S on the end of it, outsourcekings.com. And then, you know, obviously we're on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and then our Facebook business page as well. And those are the you know main methods. Awesome. So I always ask this question, every podcast, if, um, if you ran into an entrepreneur and they ask you, what was the book that had the most impact on you, what book would that be and why? Sure. That's awesome. That's an awesome question. I did not expect that. And I'm actually really happy because uh, I've, I've heard some of the similar, you know, uh, questions at the end. So, and, and, and books are so crucial. Um, how to win friends and influence people. Uh, there's a, there's a chapter in there with the story. So- Hold on just a second. I'm going to stop you for just a second. Sure. So uh, by Dale Carnegie, if anybody's looking for it, that's who wrote that book. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I was like, uh, like, one of the, like one of those split seconds. I was like, I think it's Dale Carnegie. And then Napoleon Hill was the other one. Those two are like, the, like both. Yeah. Realm. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon yep. Hill and Dale Carnegie. Yep. Yeah. I always flip flop them. When yeah. I uh, yeah. I think everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. So inside of how to win friends, friends and influence people, there's a chapter where he talks about when he goes fishing. And I think this will correlate into how I do business also and and just how anyone does business. And and this actually was how I made my first ever insurance sale was when I applied this. So the chapter talks about when uh, Dale Carnegie goes fishing, he says he loves to eat strawberries and cream. And so, you know, he likes to bring along, I guess, like strawberries and whipped cream when he goes fishing, well, whatever, a little snack when he's, when he's out there, whenever the book was written. And he says when he puts bait on his hook, he doesn't put strawberries and cream because it's not about what he likes. It's about what the fish likes. So when he puts the bait out there and you he, and he, he cast the rod, he's putting a worm out there. He said, I put a worm out there, but I'm not putting strawberries and cream because it's not about what I like. It's about what the fish likes. And so I would say, you know, to anyone, how that correlates to you and myself and just anyone is, you know, be who you are and enjoy what you like. But at the same point, when you put your services out there, think about your customer at the end of the day, you know, my, my history of my business you know, sure, it's great for you to know, but what people want to know is, hey, how did he get to the point now and what did he do and can I relate to that? And, and where they relate inside of there, that's where you'll find the people that are in the most pain and need your help the most. And they'll also trust you a lot because they relate to your story, which is how they get in contact with you. And then if they're in pain, say, for example, they're getting 20 to 50 Facebook leads a day, which we have medical offices that have that happen. And now all of a sudden you can help them with that pain. Now it's no longer become about what I like. It's about what they like and what they need help with. That's awesome. And that is like such a superb golden nugget. Um, and you know, I recently just did this with my business, um, because I created what I thought everybody needed. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I launched it, um, I found out that people really wanted, they didn't want to do it yourself. They wanted a done with you or a done for you. Right. So I ended up making like three kind of hybrids of, of what it was. And, um, it's, it's amazing because I'm not pushing strawberries and cream, I'm giving them what they want. And, and it's just, you know, um, you know, we talk about this, you know, people like, Oh, I hate sales. It, it, it's not about that. It's about if you're able to help them and you have a solution to help them, like it's, it's 
really just figuring out how you can be of best service to them. And that's really all it boils down to is how can I help you? Is it a good fit? If it's a good fit, okay, great. If we're not a good fit, let me see if I can find somebody else who is a better fit for you, right? You know, somebody comes to me and they're like, oh, I need call center calls. And I'm going to be like, okay, you need to call James because I don't touch that with a 10 foot pole, (laughs) you know? Um, So that is amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Can I I add something else just to that also? Yeah. Yeah. I think will be benefit. So anyone that's listening might hear this and say, well, how do I know what my customer likes and wants and needs? And I should have added this with it. And this is something that I did about a couple months ago and I got very surprising answers, which actually were pretty cool. So you lead with a value service and you say to your, this is the, basically the Facebook post. Say for instance, you have 10 tips and your authority in your marketplace and you want to share these 10 tips. You can say to everyone, Hey, I got a free 10 tip guide on how to outsource your follow-up and make cold calls. All I want from you guys is to fill out this quick little Google survey. Anyone that's interested type I'm in. And I got like 50 or 60 responses. I sent this Google survey and I said to everyone, you know, and you know, it was about 10 questions and there's all kinds of various questions that you can put on there. At the end, you can ask people, Hey, um, what's your email so I can send you the survey after you complete it. I'll send you this send because people aren't going to just do stuff for free. You got to give something up front. And so after they do that, you send the survey or send them, not the survey, the, um, the t- 10 tips guide. And one of the coolest things, and I did a thing and it, and it was on hiring, hiring your first virtual assistant. And it started off at like 75, 25. I asked if, the first question says, have you ever had a virtual assistant before? And when I first um, sent out the Google survey, it was like 90%, 10% said they never had a virtual assistant. When we all got done, and this still shocked me, when it was all sudden done, it was like 55% had hired a virtual assistant and 45% had never hired a virtual assistant. And if I hadn't done that Google survey, which allowed people to be anonymous, if they wanted to be anonymous, they could be anonymous. I, um, if they wanted to give me their email, they, I, I would just collect the email and send the, um, the tips, but they still had to answer the questions. And this got, gave me feedback to what to map my content around versus just building something on a whim thinking that's what the market wants and so that was like the fish telling me like hey we don't like this kind of worm we actually like this kind of product better or hey we've never done this before we actually need help with this and so it's called a free training survey whatever you want i mean that's a good way to call put it and it's a good way to get feedback from your direct market that's awesome. Like super actionable, super easy to do. So if you guys are listening to that and you're still in your research phase, even if you're not in your research phase, like send it out to your clients and, you know, same deal. Um, that's a, that's a gold mine sitting right there of information just waiting yep. for you. And so. by the time this comes out also, I just want to say this to you before I forget also, um, cause I know, I know I'll forget. We are about halfway through my actual book. I'll make sure to send you a copy. Um, no Thanks. charge, no card, no charge, nothing. I'll send you a copy. And it's actually, it's an actual physical book. Um, I hired a publisher and he, and so we will have an outsource Kings book that's going to, you know, basically teach you all kinds of tips and secrets. And, you know, would love to share that with your audience as well. That would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Send me the link and we will put it in the show notes and I'll add it. Remind me, um, yeah. I'll add it to the resources page on my website. So that would be awesome. For sure. No, I appreciate it. I I knew if I didn't mention it now, I'll forget it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, man, James, this has been, we covered a lot of ground really fast. So um, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. So just one more time, everybody, you can hit up James at outsourcekings.com, but also please go to his Facebook page and give him a friend request and just shout out and say, Hey, I heard you po- heard you on Automate to Dominate. It was an awesome podcast, and I just want to get to know you because you're an awesome man, and I need call center help. So, <laughs> all right, guys, thanks so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Automate to Dominate podcast. 
at www.awesomeoutsourcing.com slash podcast. My name is Michelle Thompson. Hey guys, if you absolutely love this show, I would greatly appreciate it if you would head on over to iTunes, subscribe and leave us a five star written review. That would be amazing. And as always, if you guys know somebody who should be listening to this podcast, please don't keep it all to yourself. Share it with your friends.